They call it the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, if you're curious about my overall impressions of the build quality and usability of this laptop, I filmed a full unboxing, which I'll link up at the end of this video. What we're going to cover in this video is the performance, color accuracy, and then a gamut of other things that I have seen over the past two weeks of having this laptop in my studio. We're going to get into all of that right now. I'd like to thank Intel for sponsoring this video and sending over this Intel Evo laptop with the i7-1165G7. Now, one of the standout features of the Intel Evo platform is battery life. And this laptop was able to run at idle at half brightness for 26 hours and 14 minutes. Now, once the laptop goes dead, you just simply just grab the super fast charger that Samsung has provided. And with this laptop powered off, you can get this battery back up to full charge in one hour and 31 minutes. Now, if you just need a quick jump start to get a few hours of battery back in your laptop on the go, you can actually get this laptop to four hours of runtime in just 30 minutes of charging. So this laptop not only lasts a long time on battery life, but it also charges up up very quickly. Now keep in mind every test you're going to hear about and see on this laptop have been run at least three times to make sure they are the most legitimate possible. For the different battery life results, you can see those coming up on the screen now. Regarding the battery life and the productivity result, what that's referring to is just a daily workflow of emails, writing Word docs, looking through PDFs and Excel spreadsheets, getting on Zoom calls, and also maybe just streaming a little bit of video here and there throughout your day, listening to music, etc. Now regarding streaming video, that is getting on YouTube, streaming video continuously until the battery goes dead. Now we see a substantial dip in the battery life when it goes to creative tasks. So for instance, Photoshop, what I did there is I ran the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery went dead. And that is a very intense workflow. So maybe if you're just doing a little more light Photoshop work, you could probably get a little bit more battery life out of this laptop. Now for the Premiere Pro, what I did is I opened up a 1080p project, started the playback, and ran that on loop until the battery went dead. So this laptop is very well optimized for battery life on the go, not only for your general productivity, but also solid for the creator tasks. One of the standout features of the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360 is the screen. This screen is a super AM OLED screen with fantastic color gamut range and color accuracy. Now the brightness I wish was a little bit brighter. I wish it was a little over that 300 nits that it pulls in, but overall it is a good brightness. You might have a little bit of difficulty seeing the screen if you're outside in a very bright setting, maybe like at noonday, sitting out at a picnic table and it's just the sun is blaring down on the screen. But otherwise, the brightness is not going to be an issue when you're indoors or in a nice shaded area. As I mentioned in my unboxing, it is insane how thin and light this laptop is, especially for the performance results we're going to see in something like the Adobe Design Suite using Photoshop. Now, one thing at first that I didn't like, but after using the laptop for a while, I found really convenient is the pen, how it just magnets right here to the back. So if I'm like working and then I'm like, ah, I really don't want to be holding this anymore. I just go ahead and drop it back there real quick and then I can just keep doing my thing. Um, the only concern I have is if you like bump it on something. So let's say, you know, you're walking with the laptop closed and you're walking past something and you're like, oh, and you, and you don't realize it bumped off, you could lose your pen. But other than that, I think it's super convenient to have it there. You know, you're working inside of your laptop. You're like, all right, time to use the pen, grab it and then just work. And then when you're done, just put it right back there. Now there are a few variations at which you can purchase this laptop. This is the 13.3 inch, but you can also get a 15.6 inch version. Now the 13.3 inch model that I'm reviewing has the option of upgrading the RAM and storage together. Now I wish you could upgrade the RAM and the storage separately, but that's neither here nor there. These are the configurations that Samsung has set up for you to purchase. Now if you are considering purchasing this laptop and you wanna know the exact live pricing and availability, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. One complaint I have about the configuration options is the max storage ability of 512 gigs. Now, as a video editor and also designer, I find myself using more than that 512, which means I'll have to constantly be dumping out to external hard drives. But one way I think you can work around this is the micro SD card slot that they include on this laptop. So what you can do is you can buy a 512 or one terabyte. The 512 runs you around $60 to $70. You can slide that in and immediately double your storage. So I think that's a great way to overcome the lack of storage upgradeability straight out of the factory. 
This of course is a two-in-one laptop making it fantastic with the combination of the pen. So you can catch up on your latest TV show or review a video edit that you just completed. Now I think this laptop is best used with the pen on full tablet mode. The reason being is the screen is just not stable enough to use the pen, it kind of falls over. So if you're going to be using it open, I recommend resting your hand here and then using the pen. Okay, now the only difficulty of using it on full tablet mode is then you lose access to the keyboard. So if you're somebody who's a big Photoshop user and you love using shortcuts, that could be an increasing issue for you because now you have no access to all your great shortcuts on the keyboard. Now you could get a small wireless keyboard to have your shortcuts run. Let's say maybe with your you know, left hand over here, if you're right-handed, you could have your shortcuts here and then you could be using your drawing tablet. So that would be a way to kind of overcome that issue or that configuration. Now the screen with the Wacom pen does not feel like paper right out of the box, but it does have a nice soft touch feel. So it doesn't feel like you're putting plastic against a hard glass screen. Now the pen is very pressure sensitive. So as you drag a heavy line, you can see it's getting thick. And then as you lighten up, it gets thinner and the pressure sensitivity is, is good. It doesn't leave any weird chunky lines at the end when you release. The pen with the Wacom technology is really nice, it's smooth, and it gives you good control of the piece that you're working on. Now, let's check out the ports real quick while we're talking about that mini SD card slot. This laptop comes with three USB type C's, a headphone jack, and a mini SD card slot. Now, one of those USB C's is Thunderbolt 4 for super fast transfer speeds, which is great if say you're out for a big photo shoot, you have like thousands of photos you're trying to get onto your laptop fast, that'll have great transfer speeds for you. Something I don't often personally use, but some people really like the feature is it does have a fingerprint reader right here underneath the power button. So go ahead, power up, tap your fingerprint, and it opens up your computer right away. Now regarding the webcam, here's a quick sample for you. Here's a test of the 720p webcam and the audio coming from the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. As mentioned during the unboxing, I like the keyboard layout. It's simple, it's clean, it's got all the keys I need, and it has a very soft, quiet keyboard. It's a shorter key travel, like I mentioned, it's more of a short to medium, uh, but it just feels very nice under my fingers. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, I love how they've given us a large trackpad on a small laptop. As you can see, they've snugged it right up to the keyboard and right up to the edge of the laptop, which gives us as much room possible. And this is great for creatives considering this laptop, it gives you a lot of room to work with. Now, one complaint about the trackpad, just personally, is that it's a little clicky. And so I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the keyboard, which I do like how quiet it is, and the trackpad. So just my personal preference, it's a little clickier than I would like, but it's still a great configuration that we have here. Now here's a quick audio sample for you of the speakers to check out that experience. Without further ado, let's get into my favorite portion of any video, and that's the performance benchmarks. Now, this laptop does come with the i7 1165G7 with 16 gigs of RAM, integrated graphics, and a 512 gig SSD. Now, do note, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, all these benchmarks have been ran three or more times to just confirm legitimacy of the tests. Now we're gonna start out in Geekbench single core and multi-core. And what I wanna point out here is how fantastic the single core performance of this laptop is. So to think about a small, thin and light laptop getting such amazing performance, is, is truly awesome, especially for people working inside of Adobe Design Suite or something like Figma, Sketch, or the Affinity Suite. This laptop truly packs a punch for photo editors, artists, and designers. Now let's move on to Geekbench Multicore. And one thing I really wanna point out here is how the i7 1165G7 falls down the charts while the Ryzen processor climbs up the charts. But let's really think about this for a second. More cores and more threads does not really mean more single in-app performance. Performance. What it means is more programs open at one time and consistently giving you performance. But the real question is, how many programs are you going to have open at one time? When I think about my workflow as a designer, I usually have Photoshop, InDesign, Spotify, and Google Chrome open at one time. So four apps is usually the most I'll have open at a single time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and open up these apps. Then I'm gonna go over to my task manager and check to see how much of the CPU is being utilized and to see if we're truly bottlenecking the computer. Let's go check it out. So as you can see, we have Spotify open. We're actually running a motivational video in the background on YouTube and I'm working inside of Photoshop. 
touching up a piece of art that I'm working on. And we are still below 30% CPU usage. Now, as you can see, our memory is at about 65%, which is why I recommend 16 gigs of RAM if you're gonna be getting this laptop, okay? It comes standard with eight and eight is good, but 16 is really great to give you that ceiling to be working in multiple apps at one time and still have great performance. So this is why, as you can see, when I'm talking about the multi-core performance, this Intel processor is gonna handle that just fine. And really, the in-app performance is gonna be really smooth, give you great feedback, and it's gonna run really fast. And we're seeing that in the Photoshop benchmarks, which will be coming up here in just a minute. Now, I will note that every client that I've ever hired, before they hire me, they always ask, Ben, I'm just really curious. What are your Geekbench single core and multi-core scores? It just really is a concern to me. And before I hire you, I just wanna make sure you have really good Geekbench single core and multi-core scores. It's very important to me. Nobody has ever asked me that in my life. And so these simulated benchmarks are kind of good at giving us a range of how well the laptop might perform, but let's be real. They are not the actual real life experience using this laptop. So let's head on over to Photoshop and check out how this laptop performs versus other laptops in its category. Now, as you can see right off the bat here, it is absolutely destroying the beloved MacBook Pro M1 by over a hundred points. And that laptop we saw with the Ryzen processor getting much better scores in Geekbench multi-core falls down the charts and is beat out by the Samsung Galaxy Book by over 40 points. So right there, you can see that the fantastic multi-core performance when we get in-app is not making a big difference. The single core performance is what matters when we look at app to app performance. Now, one test that I have absolutely loved running is the multiple fan modes. Now that score was accomplished on performance mode, which will give you about 40 decibels of fan noise, which for some people could be a little loud. But the great thing is you can quickly switch the fan modes from the keyboard deck if you're in a quieter environment and you don't wanna make so much noise or you're listening to music and you don't wanna make so much noise, you can go ahead and bump the fan down to silent mode and still get great performance out of this laptop. So whether you have your headphones on and you don't care how much noise it makes and you just wanna get optimal performance, or if you're in a quiet office setting without your headphones and you don't wanna disturb your neighbors, this laptop has you covered and will still give you good performance. When I first got this thin and light laptop, I was a little concerned about its After Effects performance. I was like, how in the world is this little tiny package gonna pack a punch in After Effects? And as you can see from the scores, it tops the charts in its category for After Effects. This does not have a dedicated GPU, so I would not get this laptop if you're considering heavy After Effects usage or heavy After Effects rendering. I would consider this laptop if you're going to be doing some light After Effects work. Nothing heavy because the dedicated GPU is important in After Effects and this laptop does not come with them. You gotta really think about apples to apples. If you're trying to compare this laptop to some H-series processor with a dedicated GPU, all day that laptop will beat it in regards to GPU intensive rendering tasks. But also what you have to think about is you're gonna get a thick, chunky, loud, hot package for a laptop of that nature. This laptop's huge benefit is fantastic battery life, color accuracy, thin and light, all with great performance in the apps for photo editors, light video editors, artists, and designers. Speaking of video editing, I would definitely recommend this laptop for 1080p. With the lack of a dedicated GPU, I just don't think that this laptop is set up for 4K. So if you're a designer or photo editor or artist who occasionally does some, you know, TikTok or Instagram or social media videos, or even just some, you know, fun videos to put together, some montages of you working on your projects, then 1080p will work fantastic. If you're a serious video editor, I would definitely recommend getting an Intel H series processor with a dedicated GPU as you'll be much more satisfied with the performance. But for 1080p, this laptop really stands out and here are the export times for you now. Regarding playback for 1080p, we saw zero drop frames on the laptop, so playback is smooth and frustration free. Now the real question is who should buy this laptop? Well, according to the specs and performance results, if you're a designer, photo editor, illustrator, digital painter, or just artist in general, this laptop has excellent color gamut range, it's thin and light, has amazing battery life, and great performance in the apps that you'll be using. Plus it is a two-in-one laptop coming with a Wacom powered S Pen. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next video.